Hello guys, welcome to this MuleSoft free tutorial. So in this tutorial, we'll be talking about how you can connect to a database using MuleSoft AnyPoint Studio. So this is a continuation of the MuleSoft tutorial that we discussed on our last series. So let's get started. So first of all, understand which database you want to connect to. So using MuleSoft, you can connect to to Oracle, you can connect to MongoDB, uh, any SAP HANA, whichever database you want, but you need to ensure that you, you, you need to use the driver before you connect so that uh, it has all the necessary class path set up for that. So let's get started. So either I can use the last project which I have created, otherwise I can, what I can do for you guys, I'll just create a new project. So you can just go to same file, new, then create a mule project. Just uh, name the project name. So here I'm gonna put MuleSoft DB tutorial and just hit finish. Uh, that will bring up your next screen. So you can just drag and drop an HTTP adapter. Then uh, you just need to set up the pretty much similar uh, HTTP configuration that we did in the last step. But yeah, just do it again. Same the port number 8081. Then click OK. So over here, if you want, you can specify the uh, the request. For example, I will do db request. So th this would be a method name. Uh, the, while you are while you are calling uh, through the request, the HTTP request. So it'd be db request. Okay. So then. Uh, uh, that's done then drag and drop a DB adapter so database connector okay and uh, over here like as you can see for uh, any connector you are dra we drag and drop you have to use in use a configuration as you can see over here there is no configuration added so once you create a configuration you can actually reuse I mean like on your project you can reuse this con configuration multiple times for an example I would say I did this mule sub tutorial, right? So if you go to the uh, go to the mule sub tutorial, as you can see, this is the message flow. But behind the scene, what it does, it creates a XML file. So if you go to configuration XML over here, you can see pretty much what we have done so far. So I mean, I have created a new one, but what I could have done, or once once you get in a, a lot of hands-on experience using uh, mule sub any point studio, you you can play around with things. You know, like you can just simply copy paste the same thing, so you can reuse. So you know that's it. Also, like tips and tricks. So you can just copy paste the same thing and just put it over there. Uh, and it's the same thing created just to show you the difference. As you can see, so this is the HTTP configuration, okay? And you come over here, go to configuration XML. See, so it's pretty much the same, okay? Right? If I copy, if I paste the same details, see. It's pretty much the same, so you can just copy paste. Okay, so but yeah, I'll just leave it uh, for as of now. Flow name. Let's go back to see. As we don't have the DB configuration added, it's showing an error. So if you go back once you create the DB configuration, it will add the config listener configuration pretty much similar to you can HTTP. So HTTP we have path, whereas on DB you will have operations like select, insert, or update, whichever you want. So let's go to message flow. So let's do the DV configuration. Okay, so database. So I'm, I'm gonna use uh, just the open source database that is S2. So I'll say S2 DB. Just to make the naming convention correctly. Uh, then I'll just go to add over here. Generic, I mean, as you can see, you can connect to MySQL, Oracle, so these are the standard ones, Derby, but you can also connect to any other open source. For example, as I said, S2 uh, is an open source database. Uh, you can also connect to MongoDB or any other open source database, okay? And just click OK. Then over here, you need to give the database URL and uh, like JDBC URL that you want to connect to and the driver class name. Okay, uh, I forgot to add the the jar file so it's like the driver class name only comes up once you need to add the class path file first okay so let's do that first then we'll come over here so in order to do that um, i just place that file like my h2db is on 
on my D drive over here. So I'll just copy this path. I'll go to we'll sub db tutorial, right click, then go to properties. Okay, then as you can see there's a whole bunch of things, but you need to just check about Java build path because this is where all the Java files have been taken. So if you guys have a bit of understanding, you have ran a few Java codes, I would say like it would be it'll be pretty much easier, you know. So then go to add external jars. So here you just need to specify, okay, I was, as it was here before, I was still, just for your understanding, pin, you can go to the same location, just make sure, like in my case, as you can see, it's S2 database, so I'm just adding it to S2 jar, otherwise if you have MySQL, so just add the MySQL.jar, or if you are using Oracle, just download the Oracle JDBC, then just add it to your class path, okay, and uh, there you go, okay, open, okay, now it's added to your class path, Hit OK. OK, well done. Then again, add the configuration, generic database configuration. OK, so I have the JDBC URL already, so I'm just going to use that one. So I mean, like, but it's pretty much you can use whichever you want. So let me go back to the screen over here. So I just put the user's mule app and the password is test. It's my database so you can depending on your database uh, this is running on my local host so it's like 192 and the port number is 9092 so it's pretty much similar in like JDBC if you're using Oracle the connection string would be different you know what I mean or you can just Google I mean if you if you have some trouble just Google out or just post in a forums so some one of our expert should be able to reply to a query okay uh, then go to driver class name you can just do a search over here Okay, there you go. So as I've added the S2 uh, jar files, you can see the, the org.s2 is coming up. So this is the embedded data, database server as well. So, so if you have added the MySQL jars, so you can see the list of uh, classes available to connect or the database you want to connect, okay? So I hit okay. So that will bring up the class name. Then you can just do a test connection to ensure that the uh, the configuration that you provided, you, you have done it correctly, okay? So let's do that. Okay, so it's sending a query to test the connection. Okay, let's see. So yeah, it takes a while. Okay, there you go. Test connection successful. So we are ready to go. Okay, so click okay. Then okay. Now it should be green. Okay, what's happening here? Why well, it's red. Okay, because we haven't chosen the operation, okay? So as, you can, as I told you before, you can do a whole bunch of operations. You can select, you can insert, you can update. Uh, you can even call a stored procedure. You, you can execute um, the DDL. So yeah, if you, if you have a lot of experience around database, you can play around with this stuff, okay? So I'm just gonna do a simple select query. So select, okay, and just drop down a bit. So as you can see over here, you can do a dynamic query, so like, if you want to pass something from your for example from your HTTP every time you pass something that come over here that you can do otherwise I'm just gonna do a simple query parameterized so it's like select start from customers so let me open up my screen here so select start from customer so this is my database so there are like some few records I've inserted okay so I'm just gonna put the same stuff over there okay select start from customer and we are done okay yeah i guess we are all done okay see now it's all good okay so just for a record what you can do we can add one logger so that you can see what's happening okay there you go okay so this is the response logger so what you can do here payload dot Contains. No, I'm just gonna leave as of now. No, not not the payload one. Actually, what we should have done. Okay, let's go with the payload just as of now. Okay, so we'll just see what's happening. Okay, so the database now pulls up. So like when you send an HTTP request, it comes to the, it goes to the database and the database returns the result and you'll see the result of it there okay but one thing you need to do like database always results in object so you need to do that you need to convert that object so if you search here object 
json to object you can see a whole bunch of things but you need to do object to json you can actually do object to xml as well so as you can see over here but you're going to try object to json as of now so object to mime object to message object to xml so let's try the json one first we'll give it a test then you can do the xml okay cool let's go so, okay so that's it then we'll just hit save and do a deployment okay you run as so it's pretty much similar you know like mule application now just deploy your application over here okay let's see initializing and there we go deployed nope not yet i was a bit excited okay 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 there you go deployed so now just make sure that you are sending to the right path over here as you can see db request so it'd be pretty much similar to localhost your port number slash db request okay so there, there you go so just put the db request it should bring up the details okay there you go as you can see customer id 64 this is the address last name first name last updated date which is pretty much similar that we have seen in the database over here okay so let's do one change so what you want to do here is as you have seen this is a json format okay so we want to change it to xml okay so it's pretty pretty easy to do that so let me show you that so you can just all you need to do is delete this one and drag and drop the object to xml okay i forgot to show you what happened on the logger part but yeah we'll cover that up uh, on the XML part, okay. So now just hit save. Now you can still see that, okay. There you go. Okay, so as you can see here, so to so the logger monitored what the result we got, okay. As you can see, it's pretty big because JSON, so the XML one should become pretty nice and easy, okay. So just hit save. Uh, one thing you'll observe here when I hit save, this deploys automatically, so that's a pretty cool feature, you know, like. Yeah, when you if you've done some editing, you just deploy it. But yeah, this sometimes it's a bit of a pain because when you uh, when you don't want to deploy, you accidentally made some changes. So you, you can actually play around with these things like window preference over here. Okay, you can search and change the configuration the way you want. Okay, so okay, let's now send another request and see how it's working. Okay, there we go. DB request and just hit enter. Okay, there we go. Nice and easy. As you can see it's pretty much formatted in xml format so so as you can see it's pretty easy to play around i mean like if you want to make some changes it's 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 really easy i mean like that it mule soft is that easy but yeah when you have some you, when you want to learn some advanced concepts you have to bit like dig a bit deeper and understand the core concepts okay all right so let's go back to a screen over here okay and you can see in the logs as well okay there you go so from the beginning, okay, so here's the info. This is where the request came in from the HTTP listener configuration. And there you go, this is the output. All right, thank you very much, guys. So I hope you liked how you can create a DB uh, connection from your AnyPoint Studio and deploy in a local server. So if you want to deploy that into on your Cloud Hub or any of your production server, you can do that as well. It's as simple as that. All right, thank you very much, guys.